Lesson 16, Module 4, Objective, Solve Word Problems Using Tape Diagrams and Fraction-by-Fraction fraction Multiplication. Joe is icing 24 cupcakes. He spreads vanilla icing on one quarter of the cupcakes and chocolate on one half of the remaining cupcakes. The rest will get mint icing. How many cupcakes have mint icing? We'll write a focused answer of blank cupcakes have mint icing. Let's start with a bar model, sometimes called a tape diagram. And let's look at that first sentence. It says, Joe is icing 24 cupcakes. In this case, we know the total amount of cupcakes that he is icing. So there's 24 cupcakes and we'll label that portion of our tape diagram. He spreads vanilla icing on one-fourth of the cupcakes. At that point, we can go ahead and divide our tape diagram into four parts, and we can label this first part V for vanilla, and that's one-fourth of 24 for the number of cupcakes that will be vanilla. In fact, 1 fourth of 24 is 24 divided by 4, which is 6. So there are 6 vanilla cupcakes. As we continue to read, it says that he will spread chocolate on one half of the remaining cupcakes. Remaining cupcakes, that means those cupcakes that are not vanilla. And then so I will continue to label my tape diagram. Those are the remaining cupcakes that are not vanilla. So we have remaining would be all of them, which is 24, minus the 6. In fact, that's 3 quarters of 24 if we wanted to figure out it in another way, which is 18. We have 6, 6, and 6 more which would be 18. One quarter of 24 already is 6, so 3 quarters is 18. Now, that's not our answer, though, because it said it was that chocolate on one half of the remaining cupcakes. And this is where it is that our bar model actually changes at this point. In that, I'm going to draw a little arrow there, and I will take those remaining cupcakes and draw another bar model. Those remaining cupcakes was 18, and it said that one half of the remaining gets chocolate, and then the rest will get mint icing. So out of those remaining cupcakes, we had half, which was for chocolate, and then half will get mint. So we have half of 18, which will be chocolate, and half of 18, which will be mint. When we say half of 18, we should be thinking of 18 divided by 2, which is 9. And then so, 9 cupcakes have mint icing. 9 cupcakes have chocolate icing, and 6 cupcakes had vanilla icing. If I check my answer, 6 plus 9 plus 9 should equal all of those cupcakes, which is 24. And it does. So this was the difference in our tape diagram. In other words, we broke it apart and took one more step. We represented those remaining cupcakes in a new tape diagram. Here's another problem. Tess puts one-third of her dog-sitting money in savings and uses one-half to pay back her brother. If she has $12 left, how much did she have at first? She had a certain amount of dollars at first. Let's break this apart using a tape diagram. So this represents 
the money that she had at first. Said that she put one third of it into savings. So this is savings here, or one third of the total. So the remaining part here is the amount that she does not put into savings. From that, she's paying back her brother, and then she'll have a certain amount left. This is where we draw the arrow, and then we break apart that portion of the tape diagram. Notice that it is the same length there. Next sentence says she uses a half of this to pay back her brother. So we will divide this into half, and that's the amount that she pays back to the brother. And we had divided this section into two parts. Finally, it says she has $12 left, and this was the amount that she had left. If she had $12 left, and this was a half of this amount not in savings, this $12 better equal the amount that she paid back towards her brother. So we have 12 and 12 more. So that is $24 total that she did not put into savings. And in fact, we can just write that $12 in there. One unit is 12, another unit is 12, and this third of the whole is also $12. $12 plus $12 plus $12 is $36. And that is the amount that she had at first. Let's check our answer. If she had $36 at first, she says she puts a third of it, or one third of 36, which is 36 divided by three, yep, equals $12, um, into savings. And then it says she uses half of that and half of the remaining to pay back her brother. So that's one half of What's remaining is $36 minus $12, which would be $24. So, let's see, one half of 24 is $12. That's how much she pays back her brother, and she still has $12 left. That's right from the problem. And then, so as you see, I've checked it now where we have those different amounts. And I had started with the $36 at first to check that value. So what we're doing is that we are carefully breaking apart a problem. And in breaking it apart, we're drawing that second tape diagram to look at that remaining part. And then so that lower tape diagram is helping us solve and understand the problem. The first problem, we knew the total, or we knew the whole. The second one, we had to actually go backwards to be able to figure out the whole. So sometimes you know a part of the whole, and sometimes you know the whole. 